want that. Yeah, even them up with your anywhere like that's good. Now, you, it, does that feel like you're in a center right there? It do. Okay, let's put a mark right here. It do feel like I'm in the center. It do very much so. Oh, I gotta come way around here. Okay, go ahead, do what you need to do. Okay, you feel good? I feel pretty good. Okay. Huh, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to do that. Perfection right here. Yeah, I feel real good about it. Why don't you put one tack in it right down there? I got if you. I had a hammer and nail, I would. Oh, I, I can I can screw it on if you want. Put a screw in it then. Okay, you got it? Yeah. Get in on it. I mean that'll temporarily tack it. Okay, so Kay just gave me a couple measurements, and I've got a straight edge here, and I marked a line right here. This is just what we're going to call a relief cut. We're going to get some of this waste out of the way, but we know this is still way too long. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this, and then we'll take it up there. Let me get this fastened down here. Okay. Put some of this top. Yeah, keep that from shifting. Now, something to note, it's a T-square, and it's two inches wide. Two inches of a gap from the center to the edge looks the best in our opinion. That's just personal preference, basically. He's at the top, he's making a tick mark. Now I'm at the bottom, so I know that the middle of my rib, the edge of it's on this side, so I need to mark on this side. All that's got to come out. Now, how we get this mark, okay? You, uh, I got to come over inch and a half, if I recall correctly. Measure your bottom from your mark, over. You see your mark? I do. No, measure the other one first. The one you got left. Over. Yes. Hook that down to the bottom. What is that measure? Inch and a half. All right, yep. do that. Then, then That'll keep that us, keep us uh, symmetrical. Yep. Okay. Measure over inch and a half. Yep. Get right on it here. Inch and a half right there. Now I think I come up an inch and a half. I do. We need we can go ahead and mark that, then I can come up. Pull this out. Yeah. Put it on yep. top. Yep, need to go ahead and Okay, I'm on the money right there. I feel like I'm on the money. You ready? Yep. Ready? We go now we are give or take two inches from that crease to that metal yeah
Okay. Head north. Yes. You about right right there, man. Right there? Yes, sir. <clears throat> so, let me show you this. 230 and 5 eighths, that was our short point for this sheet. So we knew that was the long point for the next sheet. Now, we put our roof gauge up here, figured out that angle, marked it, and then measured from the top down. And we came up with a measurement of 192 and 9 sixteenths, okay? Now, when you subtract 230 and 5 eighths, when you subtract 192 and 9 sixteenths from 230 and 5 eighths, you come up with 38 and a 16th inch drop. So, if our valley trim is straight, and it's, it's relatively straight, you should take this measurement, 192 and 9 sixteenths, subtract 38 and a sixteenth, and that will get you the short point to the next piece of metal. Now, <clears throat> next piece of metal, the long point will be 154 and a half, see how bright this is 154 and a half so let's go one five four inch and one half subtract our drop which is 38 inch and one sixteenth equals one sixteen and seven sixteenths okay so i'm going to write that down right underneath this one one sixteen and seven sixteenths. So there you go. <clears throat> Did you get this other measurement? Yes. So our next sheet of metal, because the short point of the sheet we just put up was 154 and a half, I subtracted our drop, 38 and a sixteenth, and I came up with 116 and 7 sixteenths. That's the short point, that's the long point. And you just keep going in sequence like that. So the next sheet, I've already got the two measurements. You just line that up, mark it, and cut it. You've got your next sheet. You just keep going. You just keep measuring. You keep dropping 38 and a 16th of an inch all the way up this dude. And that, that's how we do it. We've had success doing it that way, and you stay pretty daggum straight on those valleys. So, to the next one. One forty four one oh two. One oh two is my next one. That should be somewhere over here, I hope. I'm almost thinking it might be there's a hook. Nope, shorter. Must be behind me here. Perhaps. 102 right there. Okay. Yeah. Okay, here's what we got. This is our valley measurements. This is what I've been going off of. What I figured is we've got a 37 and 3 8 inch drop. I'm trying to explain this the best I can because it's kind of hard to explain. Um, we started with a 191. Our next long point of the sheet was 153 and 5 eighths. That's a 37 and 3 eighths difference in those two points automatically know that on the 191 the 153 and 5 8 was my short point that'll be my long point on the next one 
Subtract 37 and 3 eighths from 153 and 5 eighths, you get 116 and 13 sixteenths. That will be the short point on the 153 and 5 eighths. From there, the next sheet will be the long point, 116 and 3 sixteenths. Subtract 37 and 3 eighths, 78 and 13 sixteenths. Then 41 and 7 sixteenths. And you just keep going down the line. So basically, on this next sheet, this next sheet we ordered 102 inches long. We always give ourselves some waste. You can see those panels sitting up. That's our waste material. On our 102, my long point is going to be 78 and 13 sixteenths. My short point will be 41 and 7 sixteenths. So let's go over there and mark that. And then I'll show you the next step if I can best explain it. So 78 and 13 sixteenths. Now, one other thing to note. As I stack the metal on my horses, I'm making sure the bottom of the metal is going the same direction every time. That way I don't get confused. That way I can measure from the top down to the long point. So this, I know this is my long point because it's on the left side. So we're at 78 and 13. So I'm gonna pull my tape to 78 and 13 sixteenths of an inch. And I'm gonna make a mark right there. Now, what's my short point? 41 and 7 sixteenths 41 and 7 sixteenths i have terrible short-term memory so to tell myself twice look at that i already forgot it 41 and 7 right i like to double and triple check this stuff is not cheap so 41 and 7 sixteenths 41 and 7 sixteenths so i'm going to make a tick mark right there okay there's my angle now i need to trace that line now let me set this back down over here. Let me show you something that Special K rigged up. These are two, I don't even know what you call them, squares. They sell them at Lowe's, about 10 bucks, these yellow things. And then we connected a piece of aluminum to them. Let's see, I need to flip this. I believe like that. So what I put on here is these, um, I don't even know how you say it, squid jig or whatever. My friend Andy Hopke got them for me. And so this is the first job I'm getting to use them on. Um, but they work pretty well for this application. I just thought I'd try them out. And sure enough, they're working out. I'll show you how this thing works. Now, one of the first things we did when we got up there in that valley was set this up. Okay. Need this a little bit longer. There we go. Mm. Okay. So, got a vice grip down here at the angle that that is supposed to be as long as that runs straight. So, what I'm doing is basically just double checking that drop with this to make sure I haven't made a mistake. That's all this is for. Plus, I need to trace that line. So I'm on my point over here. It's really hard to see in the sunlight, um, but I'm right on the point here too as well. So the problem is this brown metal, you know, darker metals don't show up a pencil mark very well. So I've tried white pencils. They don't seem to stay on the metal when I'm cutting. So we just stick with a regular pencil. I like a mechanical pencil 0.9 myself and this part might be kind of hard to understand it's taken us years to really understand it and do it well but you come up with a pretty straight valley if you do it this way then this this is just the way we do it I'm not saying this is the right way to do it but this is the way we have success doing it all right now nibbler time wish i had a cordless one but i don't Let's see there's my other cord when we bought this thing years ago the cordless one was not available yet and this one still works so why spend another 400 bucks right all right here we go
And this is just basically a jigsaw for uh, for metal. That's the way I think of it because it's really easy to control. It's just a punch and die in here. always like to stop at about halfway and go to the other side because it's a stupid cord and it's kind of hard to reach. So there's our sheet. This is waist right here. We always order it long though because we want to make sure we have enough. We don't want to mess this up. Next up, pre-drill some holes. So two inches, two inches, and so on. Let's get down to 40, 40 inches, and that's going to be our last one, looks to be like. and straight. We like to stay that two inches away. It looks good and that's the size of a T-square, two inches. So that can help you out potentially. Oh yeah. That is beautiful.